Happy New Year! Join me, Lead Night Sky Ranger Jeff, also known as Star Dad, as we explore what's up in the sky in January of 2024. Our smallest planet, Mercury, will be 51% lit on the 7th and be a minus 0.1 magnitude. Its small 7 arc second disk will reveal some detail under high power. It rises about an hour after Venus, so observing time will be very short before the Sun overpowers it. Venus is now a morning object brilliantly shining at minus 4 magnitude. It rises around 0530 on the 15th in the east, but Sun rises soon after so you won't have much time to observe it. Some spectacular craters stand out in observing this month on the Moon. Head towards the Sea of Serenity in the northeast sector and look for the serpentine ridge on the eastern side of the sea. This is not a wave, but a ridge caused by plate tectonics early in the moon's existence. Head south below the equator to the Mare Nectaris and look for a very large crater between the Mare Nectaris and the Sinus Aspertitis. Crater Theophilius, which is about 60 miles in diameter. Relatively new compared to Katharina, to the southwest, its sharp walls stand out. Katharina is much older, showing deterioration in its crater walls. The impact that created Theophilus is likely the reason that Sinus Aspertatus, the Sea of Roughness, is so appropriately named. Now head to the north and slightly east and observe the crater Torricelli, a double impact event most likely caused by a single meteor which must have bounced a bit, caused the small crater to be slightly off-center. As an aside, Evangelista Torricelli was Galileo's assistant. Mars peeks out from behind the Sun this month, rising in between Venus and Mercury. By the end of the month, it will be visible from shortly after 0600 to about 0630 before the Sun obliterates it. Mars is relatively dim, 1.3 magnitude, and tiny 4 arc second size make it difficult to see as the morning progresses. Our asteroid of the month is 4 Vesta, which appears near Aldebaran in Taurus the Bull. On the 13th, it will pass close by Messier 1, the Crab Nebula. At magnitude 7, even a small telescope or binoculars can pick it out. Make observations a couple of nights apart and sketch its location relative to background stars, and the object that moved is it. An hour is all that is needed in astrophotography to show the light that moved, which is Vesta. The king of the planets, Jupiter, shines high in the sky at sunset, 54 degrees above the horizon on the 1st. Its brilliance diminishes somewhat from minus 2.6 magnitude to minus 2.4 magnitude. Its apparent size diminishes from 43 to 40 arc seconds during the month. Even a small telescope will reveal its four Galilean moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. The four moons routinely make transits, which I'll list on the calendar of events. Io transits on the 20th, but Jupiter is setting at that time. The ringed planet, Saturn, is now an early evening object setting by 9 p.m. At 1800, remember, 6 p.m., it will be 27 degrees above the horizon at the beginning of the month and only 12 degrees by the 31st. As Earth is approaching the opposite side of the Sun from the Saturn, its size reduces from 16 arc seconds to 15 arc seconds. Uranus is slightly lower into the east of Jupiter in the night sky. Its 4 arc second disk reveals a turquoise color shining at magnitude 5.7. You'll need a small telescope or binoculars to see it. Neptune trails behind Saturn, setting about two hours later throughout the month. It is currently in Pisces the fish. Neptune is the furthest planet from the Sun at 30.6 astronomical units, about 2.8 billion miles. Recall that an AU, astronomical unit, is the average distance between Earth and Sun, approximately 93 million miles. Its tiny blue two arc second disk stands out against other stars. This month, because Neptune is recovering from retrograde motion, it barely moves relative to background stars. The quadranted 
meteor shower peaks on the 4th, although the showers occur from December 28th to January 12th. Best observing time is 0400, although the showers will occur from 2100. At peak time, expect 25 to 30 meteors per hour. This shower is caused by Comet 2003 EH, which was discovered in 2003. The comet to watch for in the coming months is 12P Pons Brooks. The comet's orbit brings it back every 71 years. At 10th magnitude, you will need dark skies, although it can brighten perhaps as much as four magnitudes at any time. Look to the northwest in Cygnus the Swan, where it will pass near NGC 6888, the Crescent Nebula, on the 12th, and Globular Cluster M29 on the 18th. On the 15th, it will be at an altitude of 30 degrees, giving two hours of viewing if you have a clear horizon to the northwest. Our constellation of the month is a perennial favorite, Orion the Hunter. The Horsehead Nebula being a particularly challenging object. This large constellation is a fertile area for star formation, particularly along the belt where you will find this formation. Look to the star Alnitak, which is the southwestern star of the three stars in the belt. The Horsehead is slightly east and south of Alnitak. The nebula is a hydrogen-2 rich area shining at magnitude 7.3. Our question of the month is, what is the difference between a sidereal day and a solar day? A solar day is the time it takes to rotate 360 degrees such that the sun is at the same position, i.e. sunrise to sunrise. A sidereal day is the time it takes for the Earth to rotate 360 degrees relative to a distant star. To complete a year, the Sun must rotate an additional one degree each day while going around the Sun. So a solar day is thus one degree longer than a sidereal day. One degree equals about four minutes of time. Remember that Earth rotates at roughly 15 degrees per hour. So the solar day is 24 hours while the sidereal day is 23 hours and 56 minutes. Here is the monthly orrery. Here is your calendar of events. Go out and enjoy the cold nights of January 2024.